One of the worst cases I saw was in Winnesheet County up north. Uh, the guy had a torture chamber in his basement. So these things are happening in Iowa, in our own backyards. I'm a small town Iowa girl. What am I supposed to do about that? It's going on in every county in Iowa. It's evolved from the standpoint that we used to know which corner on Main Street to go, oh, that's where the prostitutes are. You can talk to anyone in Cedar Rapids, take someone off the street and, and say human trafficking, and they're like, what are you talking about? They can't be in Iowa. We're, we're a homegrown, you know, good state. That, that doesn't happen here. I think a lot of times we have to combat that idea that while it may be happening in Chicago or it may be happening in LA or on the coast, that it's not happening in the heartland, and really um, understand that it's happening here in our communities. In 2016, the United States reported 5,551 cases of sex trafficking. The average age for these victims in the U.S., 13 to 14 years old. Youth just want to feel safe and feel like they have a family, and that's what traffickers and pimps develop, is the sense of family. Um, they are referred to as daddy usually. It might be that girl at school that's the third wheel or doesn't get the attention of boys or um, maybe doesn't have the same kind of clothes as the rest of the girls do, and so she has those gaps of vulnerability and pimps will prey in on that. Once the trafficker has, has them, they convince them that I love you, I'm going to take care of you, you're going to be my wife, we're going to be happily ever after, and then within a few days, typically they're sexually assaulted, raped, and put on the streets. Um, a lot of times there's drugs involved to get them to become more numb to what's happening. A lot of people don't understand why women in general, kids, or anyone would stay in that situation, but there's a lot of uh, power and control. Sex trafficking victims often have their identity stolen and are taken to other cities where they don't have any resources. I think that when young girls have this mindset of unhealthy relationships in the first place. They come from homes where maybe there wasn't a father present or uh, a good father for that matter. Uh, I've heard a lot of times stepdads raped them. Um, so they don't understand healthy relationships in the, in the first place. So the trafficker catches onto that and uses that against them to create an unhealthy relationship. People don't believe it happens here. They're so naive into believing that it couldn't possibly be happening here. And then if it is happening here, it's the victim's fault. They think it's the victim's fault. You know, they, maybe they don't understand poverty well enough to understand that somebody may choose to participate in, in prostitution, but they may not have any other viable choice no kid voluntarily steps forward at age 14 and says, I'm going to become a prostitute. They are groomed and they are lured into that life. For years, Backpage was a place for anyone's sex trafficking needs. The only difference from Craigslist was escort services offered in the adult section. During college football games and the state fair, traffic would increase by 40%, which is roughly 300 people a day. We're always trying to make sure that survivors who come out of trafficking scenarios have access to services that they need and the protections that they need. So we tell them, you're in charge, I do what you tell me to do, which is always surprising because they've been told what to do their entire lives. Sometimes people misunderstand that trafficking isn't always somebody being kidnapped and forced into prostitution. Sometimes these, these people are being prostituted from their classroom and they go home and they sleep in their bedroom every night so they don't need a, a shelter and they don't need uh, clothes because that's the only thing they own. Um, their identification, medical needs, um, just getting them back on a regular schedule of eating and sleeping and that kind of thing. Um, those are the main things in the beginning and then from there everything is 
every 30 days we just do like a goal assessment with her and together we just decide like what what is the best plan for the next steps that she's willing to take. The abuse, the exploitation, the horrendous uh, trauma that comes from being raped over and over again one day after another. These traffickers are destroying human beings. They're destroying their, uh, their very souls. When you get to that bottom place where you realize that this man or woman doesn't care about me and I'm only being used, so they, you can either kill me or I'm, I'm walking away. In Iowa, the number of teenagers trafficked has been increasing. Set Free in Dubuque has worked directly with four or five victims since September. Wings of Refuge houses about five women per year at their shelter in Iowa Falls. We don't have enough statistics in Iowa yet. Uh, I wish we did. We have only been in operation for about six months and no one has tracked data well enough because no one has really recognized that this is an issue. At this point we haven't had a him but I, I, I don't ever want to forget the hymns who are out there, you know, because males, it's so hard for male trafficking victims to admit that they're victims. You can't really say that, that one race or the other, oh, they're a prostitute because they're of this race or that race, because we know that prostitution happens in all of them. Trafficking happens in all races. Across the state, trainings have begun to inform people about sex trafficking. In the next nine months, 12 trainings will take place across the state through the Attorney General's office. Other nonprofits across the state are also doing work to be sure more information is known about trafficking. Some of them are small groups, like maybe eight or ten women gathered in someone's home. Uh, some of them are much larger groups. Uh, these days parishes cluster and so they'll bring together like a study day and they, they've had like 150 people. Uh, we live in a society that is focused on especially white men being in power and being able to do essentially whatever they want to. Um, pornography and other things have become uh, much more popular and okay in our society. And so men having conversations with other men just tell them that this is not okay. And so you get this perception, oh, they cleaned up Main Street. We don't have prostitutes anymore, which is totally absurd and wrong. And so you have to, to, to relearn how to find them. And then you can see them. And I think that that's a really important part of, of what we do is how do we seek to pe serve people we don't see. They're so worried about prosecution. Well, without the programs in place to be able to help them, the justice system puts them into jail essentially and reaffirms that message from the trafficker that yes, in fact, they have put me in jail and I'm not a criminal. For the first time in history, Iowa provided state funding to combat human trafficking. The funds have helped assist service agencies and victims. The Attorney General's Office and Crime Assistance Division are working with the Department of Public Safety on several different initiatives. The bill we're working on right now, it did make it through the first funnel week, is called Aaron's Law. The law under child sexual abuse prevention would prevent kids from being trafficked. It would require Iowa to teach about sexual abuse and how to report it. Uh, we need to do this because it's the very kids that are sexually abused by a relative or a, someone in the neighborhood who are very then very vulnerable to being lured into trafficking. There is a, a kind of a universal faith community response where all of these faith leaders are really encouraging their people to become aware to do whatever they can. I think that societally wide, people are much more alone than they have ever been. And so because they are so lonely, I think that there is an increase in sexual trafficking. And that goes beyond just straight prostitution or a, a sex trafficking victim. 
because it also goes into the issue of pornography. People are struggling with relationships. They don't know how to be friends anymore. They don't know how to have that one-on-one -on -one communication because they've got a screen in front of them instead that puts it, that physical barrier, that physical distance between you and other people. And so I think that there's an, a, an opportunity for people to fail to be human anymore. Sex traffickers are often overly afraid and paranoid somebody may be following them. Traffickers have a power dynamic and exert control, force, fraud, and coercion over an individual that otherwise may not exist. They tell you they have a great job opportunity for you where you're going to make a lot of money and they won't really give you any details. And sometimes they will pose as like talent scouts or somebody that's a, looking for a new model and, and they'll feed you these lines that say, hey, you're perfect for this. Um, you're beautiful. I love you. I'm going to take care of you. Our goal is to end human trafficking in Iowa. And to be honest, uh, with what happened this last year with the big turnaround in services, we're going to see a lot more reports of trafficking, a lot more investigations, a lot more cases. So I think we're far from reaching our goals. And the more that the general population knows and understands, um, the more impact we have on this. Because now everyone's looking, people are watching. People are looking when they're at the gas station, when they're in Walmart, when they're at a movie theater, when they're at a mall. Their eyes are open, their ears are open, and they're listening and looking for what these things are. And um, and they can start to have real impact. I mean, with, with if everyone knew what this was and what this looked like and what to what to look out for and how to help, this changes everything. We as advocates can't do everything alone. We recognize that. It takes a community to stop this. Uh, it takes community recognition. It takes work from law enforcement, from churches, from other social service agencies to get this done. That if they can just be compassionate and see the person first as a person, not as a victim, not as a survivor, let them just be a person. A person who has value and a person who has merit and value them first as a person and then help them as a survivor, as a victim. I think that that's the important thing to do. And do that for the trafficker as well. That's harder. I want my kids to live in a different world than that where my daughter doesn't have to worry about this. My, my son is a man enough to stand for what's right. You have to learn to live even though you know this world has fallen and broken. Um, there's a lot of people out there who, who have done a lot of destruction. But at the end of the day, um, there's a lot of amazing people in the world. And I do believe that it says in the Bible that light overcomes the darkness. And I have to believe that every single morning that I wake up or I would have been out of this a long time ago.